Hey, you guys, this will be a quick one, and it will be a, a wonderful uh, eternal security clip for you. Um, I always uh, boast about Jordan. By the way, I hope you guys are praying for him. He was in the hospital yesterday. <clears throat> Poor kid. He just, he, he just had some kind of, he was wide awake, but he had some kind of seizure, and I'm, I'm really concerned for him, so please keep praying for him. Uh, Jordan at Revivalist for Christ. But he says something. Have you ever seen a circumcision where they put the flesh back on? And that is so profound. Uh, it is a picture of our blessed assurance in Christ. Because uh, when we believed in Jesus, okay, we put our trust. And when I say believe in Jesus, let me be clear. We believed, we trusted that the gospel of our salvation, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, guarantees that we will also rise again one day and be just like him, have a glorified and moral body. This corruption puts on incorruption and this mortality puts on immortality. And it's only because of what he's done. And we have God's righteousness because he counts our faith for righteousness. Our faith in Jesus, our belief that the gospel is true, he counts it for righteousness. Now, with that being said, a lot of people are stuck in these ordinances and laws, which were a shadow of Jesus. Uh, circumcision, keeping the feast days, food laws, ordinances, uh, weak and beggarly elements of the world. Now, if my flesh died, what does it matter what a dead guy eats? If I have had my flesh cut away from who I truly am, and now I'm in Christ, and one day I'll put on a new body just like his, what does it matter if it's circumcised? I've been circumcised away. My flesh has been circumcised away from me. It can't be put back on. I was dead in trespassing sins. The flesh is dead. I died with Christ. And I love what our sister said, um, Miss Mustard Seed. Now, she's right in the sense of we don't have to die daily. But when I say I die daily, and I use Paul's words, and he was referencing um, uh, all he's gone through for the Lord. But when I say that, I mean it's a battle here in the mind. Every day. We have to remind ourselves, we died already so that we can be alive and walk in newness of life. We are alive under righteousness. That's why I do not understand this uh, attack and accusation against those of us that believe the gospel. None of us believe we're free to sin more because sin is bondage. It'd be like saying you're free to go to prison. It just doesn't make sense. We are a new creature, a new creation in Christ. And circumcision is a perfect example of our blessed assurance. Let me give you some verses on that. Now, there's tons of them, but I'm just going to give you the ones that I think are most relevant. Now, Paul says in Romans that, for he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But because the issue was, you got to become a Jew to become a Christian meaning you got to be circumcised to keep the law of Moses to be saved. No, you don't. These were shadows. And when the temple was destroyed, that was the end of that. It cannot even, like Brother Luke says, you can't even do biblical Judaism or, or Old Testament Israel's uh, law anymore. The temple doesn't stand. Jesus died once for all. That was the picture of the animal sacrifices and all of the things in the law, the feast and all of that was all shadows of him. So it tells us he is a Jew because the reason he's saying this is because people were saying you had to be a Jew. No, you don't have to be. If you're a Gentile. You don't have to start acting like a Jew and wearing a tallit and getting circumcised and all this stuff. He is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter whose praise is not of men, but of God. Now, it's interesting Several places in the Bible, he talks about people being uncircumcised in their ears, <laughs> uncircumcised in their heart. You know, you see it in Acts 7.51. It says, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. 
you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. And I believe that's Stephen. And, uh, you know, they did him the favor and killed him for that. It's terrible. It's terrible. They the Legalist, it says this day, that the, the children of, of the bondwoman will always persecute the children of promise. And it's true. All right. So you look over at Philipp Philippians ten, uh, 3, and it says, For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Then Paul goes on to say, if anybody should have confidence in the flesh, it should be me. I'm a Pharisee, son of a Pharisee. As touching the law, blameless. Circumcised the eighth day in the tribe of Benjamin. He goes on to tell them, if anybody should be boasting in that stuff, it'd be me. But there's no reason to boast because it was just a shadow. So he's going to boast in Jesus, just like we do. Isn't it amazing how we're still accused when we just lay it all on him? He is everything. It's all him. He gets all the glory. Colossians 2.11. In whom ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. And putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Do you see what happened there? Let's continue. Buried with him in baptism. Wherein also ye are risen with him. Through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. So God performed this operation on us, removing this dead flesh away from me. And as Jordan says, have you ever seen a circumcision put back on the flesh? It's a picture of removing our dead body Paul said, who will save me from this body of death? Oh, wretched man that I am. The good that I would, that I don't. The thing that I hate, that I do. It is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells in me. Now, that is not a, a free-for-all. Well, it's not me doing it. It's a, if you make a conscious decision to do it, it is you doing it. But it's because you have this body of death. And we're to fight the good fight daily. And the way we do that is to remind ourselves, I died with Christ. I'm alive unto righteousness, not to my flesh. We're not going to hear that guy. He died. But isn't this beautiful? That the flesh was circumcised away from us. It can't be put back on us. We were dead in trespass and sins. But we've been brought close now. We've been pr brought to God, reconciled to God through the blood of Jesus. Man, I just wish people would understand this. Let's read that one more time. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. The promise that we will be raised from the dead rests on the proof that Jesus was raised from the dead. No doubt in my mind that was true. That is the only thing that should confirm your faith. That's the only proof, evidence you need is the risen Christ, that empty tomb. I believe him. It's the best news ever. And God counts our faith for righteousness. Our flesh has been circumcised away from us. It goes back to the dirt, turns to ash. We get a whole new body. It's great news, you guys. God bless you.